always love to pray to the Almighty God. And when you pray to Hashem, Hashem answer. God always answer. I used to ask him, Nathaniel, what are you looking in life? What's the secret to be successful? You know what Daniel used to tell me, Rabbi, I'm not looking for money. I'm not looking for good families. I'm not looking for education, doctor, pharmacy, pharmacist. I'm looking for simple items that this is the most important items in our life. And you know what, how do you call it? Mazal. A good luck. When you have a good mazal, everything open. Everything that you do is successful. You know what is Daniel wife name? Mazal. <laughs> God said, you ask for mazal, I will send you mazal. So let's clap the hand of mazal. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a minute that a person is getting married, today I'm going to give you many, many advice. Advice that might be, will inspire and will change your life until 120 to have a happy life. You are lucky to come here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, the first one I'm going to speak to our Khatan Vakala, Daniel Ben Mazal Tsionov. That um, the first thing that you have to do is a switch. A switch to understand that the first priority in this moment, from a minute that you get married, Aviel and Yoni and all your friends, Yaakov and all your friends, how do we call it in English? The hood. All the hood, the Bukharian hood is important, but your wife is the most important. And this moment, you know, you take many, many young, child, young boys that get married to make the switch. They still live like they're singles. You know many times I'm calling, I, I get phone calls from wife, Rabbi, my husband doesn't come home, he's always all day long with his friends. He didn't make the switch. Hello, good morning, you marry. Especially in the fourth year. The fourth year is the most important years in marriage. Not the second years, not the third years. In a building, in a building, which floor is the most important floors? That if you have it strong, you can build 28 floors or maybe 100. And if it's a week, even two floors you cannot build. Which floor is the most important? The first. The, how do you call it? The foundation. Beautiful. The fourth year in marriage is the most difficult year. Now I can be honest. I didn't tell you before you got married because I want you to get married. <laughs> but, and the fourth year, you both come with attitude. Who are you to talk to me like this? Who are you to respond? She put in the flag, woman rights. We are in America 2022-ish. And you put in the rights, Bukharian rights. We have Bukharian rights, we have rights, we have rights. We came with the rights. We came to the world with the rights. Woman rights came later. We are original, we are the original rights. And then is a lot of obstacles, a lot of things that you don't know about each other. And you start to discover. Remember, the fourth year in marriage is a time that you have to invest, and we're gonna speak about it, in your marriage and the most important. If the foundation, if you put enough cement, you know what's going to happen? You can build a building of 120 floors. 120 floors of happiness. And all that it takes is one year. But the most important one, the fourth year. So if you got married, if you're still newlywed, or in the way that you use it in America, Rocky, right? Rocky? How do you call the players the fourth year? Rocky. If you're still a Rocky, and you still feel butterfly and this, and you have vision and dreams, wake up, drink the coffee. Good morning, America. Now in, we have obstacles, no, it's normal, it's normal to have obstacles, it's normal. This is the fourth year. This is the most challenges because this is the cement, the foundation. Build the foundation right. The first advice I'm gonna give you is, remember your friends is important, but they're not so important in this moment. Your wife and your husband, is in the highest priority, even above your family. Even above your family. Nothing is more. You want one day to spend with your friends, okay. But that's it. The whole week, especially in the fourth year, logic-wise, you know why? In the fourth year, a wife doesn't have yet children. When you have no children, and you're staying alone at night, do you know that al a husband cannot go in to business trips in the fourth year without taking his wife? Do you know that Al-Hawai is a husband cannot come Wednesday, Monday night class in the fourth year without asking the permission of his wife? Even to Shiu Torah, you have to ask permission. And the fourth year is the dedication to your wife. Not only the fourth week that you're not allowed to work, 
You're not allowed to work in the seven days. Why? To dedicate 24 hours to your wife. They said, except if something needs parnasa, to leave, literally to pay the rent. But if you don't have to pay the rent, urgent, and you have enough money for the first week, then you're not allowed to work. This is the time to invest. Friends, Yoni, and Avian. You have to tell them I love you. But once a week only. Don't push it. <laughs> Second thing is, no, let's go, let's go in. We spoke about the power of tefillah, so now we're going to get in. I'm going to give you a few, few messages to all of you. Um, Daniel, we love you very much. Very happy. You know, I love him so much that I was um, in his wedding one and a half hours before the wedding starts. In my wedding, I came one and a half hours late. <laughs> My wife, you know, and my wife, she's like a Mr. Benjamin of persistence, accurate, time is times, you know, and I'm Israeli, Balagan, Balagan, America. What I'm doing, everybody's in the wedding, I'm in the curtain, praying, God, the Almighty God, make sure our life is going to be good, make sure. Instead of taking pictures, I'm reading the whole book of Tehidim. I believe I finish it in that day maybe twice or three times. The whole book. Every second to make sure that this life is going to be a good life. Wow. We have to pray. People is busy to make pictures, to make selfie, to make balagan. This picture is going to help you to what? After five minutes, nobody's, uh, nobody's looking at the pictures anymore. But every chapter of Tehidim, every tefillah. And this is the uniqueness of this week. Ladies and gentlemen, the first secret that I'm going to reveal tonight is the power of prayer. Tomorrow night is a special night. What is so special about tomorrow night? Is the holidays of? The holidays of love. I see Moshe, yes, the holidays. Rabbi, why tomorrow? Every day is the holidays of love. Every day. But, <laughs> every day is still butterfly, Balagan. Every day. Rookie, rookie, come. Parala, rookie, shalan. Yes, yes. Okay, I'm talking about the older guy, the one that married 10 years or 20 years. Once in a year we celebrate holidays of love. You know how you call these holidays? Do be av. The 15 days of Av. Our sages said, Lo ayu yamim tovim li Israel. There's no better days in the calendars from two days. Come, what's the name of these two days? Yom HaKippurim and the 15 days of Av. The question is, what's your separation? Yom HaKippur, I understand. God erase our sin. Everybody here in this room, when Yom Kippur finish, finish we all feel good, right? You feel clean. You feel a new year. You feel new beginning. New hope. But what exactly happened in Tubeav? Okay, Shidduchim. We are already married. What is good for us? Listen to the message. And this is the first message of tonight. The first message of tonight is, you know what exactly happened in, in Tubeav? This week, parasha, what's the name of this parasha? Ba'et Hanan El Hashem Ba'et Ha'i. Moshe Rabbeinu is praying to the Almighty God. How many prayer? 515 times request the same items. He's like a child. Anyone here that have a child? When he's young, when he wants something, Abba, I want lollipop. Abba, I want two o'clock in the morning. Abba, lollipop. They are nudnik. Nudnik is a person that never ends until he's getting. Moshe Rabbeinu starts his first tefillah in Tubeav. Why in Tubeav? Why Moshe Rabbeinu start to pray in these days? Listen to this. In Tubeav, the first miracle that happened, the first miracle is, God promised, God swear, the Torah said, loud and clear, that the whole generation that left Egypt, none of them will walk in to Israel. None of them, right? All of them will be dead on the desert. Only after 40 years, when all of them dead, only then the new generation will enter to the land. How many people were supposed to die, ladies and gentlemen? 600,000 Jews. 600,000 got the punishment to die because of the golden calf, because Chet Ameraglim, because many sins that they did throughout the world throughout the 40 years. And God swear, listen to this. How much is 600,000 divided to 40 years? How much? Anyone here know how to 
I mean, you know, Bukharian, they don't like to have to, to be accounting. Most of them know how to make money. Very few have know how to count. Said, Rabbi, we don't know how to count. We know how to make. How much is 15, 600,000? 15,000. 15, Do you know what exactly the Gemara said? Every year and the nine days of Av. A few days ago, we cry over the destruction. We didn't cry only over the destruction. We also cried for every year, 15,000 Jews die. They went into the grave. All of them went to the grave. All of them stood up after the Shabbat. 15,000 die. Every year, 15,000. Except the last year. The last year was the last 15,000, right? They went into the grave. The 10 days, they stood up. We still alive. They went again. Maybe we made the mistakes in the ditch. They woke up. They still alive. They went until the 15 days of Av. For six days they went. Why? Because in day 15 you can see the difference in the moon. Now you know that it's not the nine days. And they realize that God changed the decree. That God forgive. That God changed the promise that he made. Ladies and gentlemen, how can you change the decree of God? What do you have to do? You know what our sages said? To pray. When you pray, when you beg into the Almighty God, when you cry, you know what exactly happened? God answered your prayer. So how come he didn't answer before? You know why? I'm sorry to say it for the people that are smoking. How can you smoke? When you're holding a cigarette, a, cup, a, cup, a, a pack of cigarettes, and he said, and he said clearly, lead to cancer, lead to cancer, lead to cancer, and you see people take the cigarette. <sighs> How can you smoke? I don't understand. He said in the box, maybe 20 times, cancer, 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 and people are still smoking. What exactly happened? I don't understand. And people smoke one pack, two packs. How can you do it? You know why? Because deep down, people believe. It's not going to happen to me. You are right, but to me it's not going to happen. Yes, we have challenges with diabetes, but to me it's not going to happen. I will eat the chocolate, I will eat at night the ice cream. It's not going to happen to me. We believe that it's not going to happen. For, for 29 years, each one of them that went to the grave believe it's not going to happen to me. But in the last year, it was only 15,000. All of them were supposed to die. You know, when, when they went to the, to the grave, they scream, they shout, they cry from the bottom of their heart. Oh, you know why? Because they know that this is the only chance to save. Because there's no another one. We are definitely 100% dead. So if we're not going to, you know, break in tears, if we're not going to scream from the bottom of our heart, we're not going to be saved. They pray, and God never refused the prayer of a human being. Moshe Rabbeinu saw it. And you know what Moshe Rabbeinu said? God promised me also not to go to the land, but now I can see that with a strong tefillah, I can break the promise of God. I can break any decree against me. You want to have a child? You want to have shalom bayit? You want to be healthy? You want to become wealthy and rich? You want to finish the shas? You want to do something massive in your life? The first tool, the first weapon that I'm giving you is the power to prayer. Don't ever take tefillah lightly. You come in the morning to the synagogues. Every morning we have you minyan. 7.30 exactly, 8.30, you are out. We have a free parking. You can park over there in the parking lot of a, a Target. Above Target, they have a parking light. You come in like a rich man, you take the key and you throw it, and you leave your car, and you come in to pray, and we pay for it. We have coffee, not a regular coffee, original Starbucks, America. You don't have to pay $8, it's on the house as well. You have amazing Divrei Torah, and amazing Tefillah. My name is Rabbi Asher Vaknin, and I approve this message. Please, wake up in the morning, come, for the, for the wife. I will tell you, you don't have to do nothing. You don't have to wake up. Don't come here. Continue to sleep. 
But just make sure to wake up your husband. You wake him up, he leaves, you go to back to sleep, you get 50% on the house. In Ghana, then, the clock is ticking. The money, the cash is in. You don't have to do nothing, just send them in, send them nicely. If not nicely, cold water definitely make a difference. <laughs> With ice. He will jump in, and you're gonna say, Hashem Alech, Hashem Alech, Hashem Alech, Hashem Alech, Hashem Alech. Go in to prayer. God will answer your prayer, and I continue to sleep. Ladies, gentlemen, nothing is stronger. Do you know what's the life proof? Daniel the Mazan. They pray so hard. And they got a perfect Shidduch. God always answer to our prayer. If this is so, I'm going to give you today three short tips how to manage your marriage until 120. The f from this week, Parasha. You see, many of us have obstacles in Shalom Bait. So how do, we, how, how do we fix it? You come into the rabbis, the rabbi give you tips, do not scream on your husband, give him kavod, because the husband always complains, she doesn't respect me, the way that she's talking, and the wife complains. What's the number one complaint of the wife? Ladies, what's the number one complaint of the wife? Every woman? He doesn't spend time with me. And every woman, not only listening, listening is the second complaint. He doesn't listen. I love it when the husband is talking on the phone. Talk to me, talk to me. And I, talk to me. But, you know, how many times you ask your husband, what exactly he said? You spoke 20 minutes. Why, why are you asking different, different, difficult questions? Why are you asking me questions? He's thinking 200. I'm not talking about listening. Spending times. But do you think that if your husband will fix it, the problem will be fixed. I'm sorry to tell you. Tonight, we're going to go a little deeper. We're going to swim in much deeper water. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is what we call bandit. You know what we mean bandit? They call it feeling. They have in a medicine field, or I have many students, maybe 20 of them, that they're dentists. In the dentist business, they call it feeling. You know what feeling? Or Tylenol. You have a pain, you're coming in, you take Tylenol, Advil, or you take cognac or arak, you put it like this, you make the place numb, and you continue with your life. That this is helping the situation? Yes, for the next few days. You know what's gonna happen later? Feeling is not gonna be good enough. You're gonna need root canal. So it's better to fix it when it's the only feeling. Feeling meaning the path. If you're not gonna change the way that you look at marriage, you're always gonna bump into problem. If you're not going to manage, if you're not going to make the switch, how to look and which path I'm building to fix my marriage, it's not a question if you're going to have problem. It's a hundred percent, almost on a daily basis, that you're going to stand up to a new challenge. Today I'm going to give you two, three different paths. That if you're going to go with this path, if you're going to make that switch, your life is going to be incredible, and this is Torah advice. And only Torah can give you such advice. In the second world, just the opposite. You're going to see that all the problems that we have in life is because of the second approach. But when you follow Torah approach, you're going to see that life becomes so easy and so perfect. So respectable. You don't have to teach your wife to respect you. You don't have to teach your husband to give you times. It becomes much deeper. The first one is, how, which parasha is this week, Natalia? Which parasha? We said, Vayet Hanan. You know what's mean Vayet Hanan? You know what's mean Vayet Hanan? Vayet Hanan meaning, I'm begging. One explanation is, Moshe Rabbeinu was begging, begging. Begging, like, like a poor human being, I'm begging. God, please. But Rashi write, no, no, no. It's not, it's like, it's not only begging. Our Shiro Torah is going to be. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to this. Rashi writes meaning matnat chinam. When Moshe Rabbeinu asked, he didn't come with the request, God, you owe me. A person keeps Shabbat? When Shabbat is decides to keep, Sunday he's coming to God, he's talking to God, and he's saying, God, you know, you owe me. 
This week I want a good week. Why? Because I keep Shabbat. You know, I did something for you. He already came on Shabbat. A person do charity, that's it. The Almighty God have to become rich. All of us come with attitude that somebody, all of us, come on Shabbat and write and teach all of us. The approach, the right approach is nobody owe you nothing. Moshe Rabbeinu had two, two ways to come. One way is, God, I gave my life 40 years. I took the, the Jewish nation from, the, from, the, from Egypt. I split the sea. I gave the Torah. I did so much to you. What did I'm asking? Let me in. Give me every Israel. And Moshe Rabbeinu never used it. Never used it. What Moshe Rabbeinu said? Give me a free gift. God, you don't owe me anything. Give me a free gift. You see, in marriage, what is the most common argument that we have? You know what I did to you? You owe me so much. I did this and I did. We always mention what we did. We come in with the attitude is that I have to accept. You have to give it to me. You have to respect me. And if you're not doing it, something is wrong. Because in the secular world, marriage is about what I'm gaining. I need to gain. How many times I say it in my classes when you ask you why your wife is good? Oh, my wife, she's amazing. She's an incredible chef. She's cooking the best food. She is one of a kind mother. The way that she cares for the children is incredible. She's doing everything to make me happy. She's. I didn't ask you why you love yourself. I ask you why you love your wife. Do you see? A secular world teaches us that in order to be happy, in order to get married, is the question is, what I'm gaining? Religious world is teaching us what I'm giving. It's not the question what you're gaining, if she did it or not. It's the question is, how much you give? How do we call the most important holidays in our uh, uh, year? When God gave us the Torah, how do you call these holidays? Matan Torah. Not Kabbalat Torah. You know why Matan? Noten a Torah. You know why? Because the purpose of God is not to get, it's to give. Love build with giving. If each one of us will change his approach to Torah approach, my dear wife, you don't owe me anything. If God forbid a woman doesn't cook one day, night dinner, crisis, why? Two years, three years, every night you have dinner and everything is perfect. One day she decides that she is tired. And she gives you phone numbers of restaurants, Chinese, Japanese, sushi, shmoshi, pizza, whatever you want. And you look with such a face. What a chutzpah. I don't understand. Anyone owe you anything? Uh, Daniel, I know that they have obligation between a husband and wife. Just a small reminder, two days ago, I believe that you still remember, still fresh. Who is the one that signed the Ketubah? You or your wife? Me. So who is the one that obligated? You or your wife? Thank you. <laughs> you understand? I never saw any signature that the wife signed. Yes, wife, ladies, you have obligation. You do have obligation to cook, to clean. Don't think, so. one day I'm going to teach you all the obligation. You do have, but I didn't see any signature that the wife signed. Under the chuppah, the wife just do what? <laughs> <laughs> and then in the picture, in the selfie, in the selfie, in the America, that, that's it, this what they do. And you shaking with the hand, you have to sign, I saw the needles like this. <laughs> I, said, <"What> is <laughs> yeah, I said, are you nervous because of the application or because of the money? He said, Rabbi, both of them. I don't know what to do. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our life, the change that we have to do is Marriage is not by what you give, what you're accepting, what you're gaining. Marriage is about what you're giving. Imagine if you, you do such a switch and you give with no intention to get anything back. If a husband wake up in the morning and making coffee, just coffee to the wife. Now all day long is going outside with expectation. Now the lunch is going to have to be special. But now it's not Shabbat, it's not a regular, it's a simple day. No, 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 no. She has to stand up in the kitchen three hours. Original, not the fake one. Not the one that you buy. No, no, the original. Why? Because I make you coffee. When exactly are we going to stop demanding? Moshe Rabbeinu had many, many reasons to demand. And which other two did he choose? Free gift. God, you don't owe me anything. My job is to serve you. How do they say it in English? 
do not ask what America can do for you. Ask what you can do to America. Do not ask what your husband can do for you. He's going to take me to vacation, not going to take me to vacation. He's going to pay this, he's not going to pay, he's going to buy me. Ask what you can do to your husband, what you can do to your wife. <coughs> Marriage is about giving by Hanan el Hashem. The false explanation that the Torah said is how much a person, you see, you see, the difference between, listen to this Kabbalistic wife, how do you know, what is your name? Avi. Avi, Michela. Avi, how do you know that you become a great human being? When exactly is the difference between becoming a child to becoming a great human being? In Hebrew, how do you call a baby in the stomach? Ubar. Ubar, right? Ubar is a small baby in the stomach. What exactly the Ubar is doing all day long? In the swimming pool. He's in the down. jacuzzi, in the jacuzzi. Kapara, I love you. Now, then you come in outside in the world and you go up. How do you know that you're growing up? You know what's the difference between Ubar and a human being? Ubar is only receiving. When you only are receiver, you're nobody. You're a baby as baby that you can get. If when your purpose in life is to get, you're not only not great, you're not even a human being. You're the, you depend, your life depends on somebody else. Because this is your purpose. How did the Pasuk said Moshe Rabbeinu? Vaigidal Moshe! Vaitzel Chav. And Moshe Rabbeinu become big. You know how you know? He went out to help his brothers. A meaning that you help somebody else. A meaning that you do it. By giving and not by asking back. You become a great human being. So do you want to stay a baby? Don't get offended if your wife or your husband will call you babies. If all of what you're asking is, give me, give me, give me. No, 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 no. Our job is to give and not to receive. Growing up meaning making the change. The secular world teacher teach us that marriage is about what I'm receiving. Religious uh, teach us marriage is about what we're giving. Second advice. The second advice is like this. Whatever about time. You see what's the challenge in our life? Moshe Rabbeinu no. And I believe that each one of us have to know. And it's very difficult. What I'm going to tell you right now is very difficult to change. It's not going to happen overnight. And this is a lifetime job. But it's worthy. This is a lifetime job. You know what is the job of our life is? To respect ourselves with no need for the approval of others. You're asking a rabbi, how is your speech? Ask the crowd, and according to that, I will judge my speech. Why do you judge your speech according to the crowd? You see, from young age, they teach us, in order to be recognized, you have to wear Nike. And not regular Nike, Air Jordan, America. $700, you spend to a shoes, you jump, you cannot come back. These shoes. <laughs> and only then you become important. You cannot wear a regular watch, have to be a Rolex, or even better. Richard, F for Richard. Where is Richard? America, Richard, F for Richard. <laughs> Only then you become someone. It doesn't, you cannot be a regular suit. You have to be original from Italy. Only when you spend $3,000 you feel that you are someone. I don't understand why we become so needy for the approval of others. I mean, you're not important enough to respect yourself for who you are. You know who you are? Today I saw in the Yom Yom. Loving a Jew is loving God. How can loving a Jew can be loving God? Because it's, it's, it's the creation of God. It's the creation of God. And what else? Arbanit, what else? I just want to mention your name. <laughs> May God will give your husband a long life and a healthy life with you to, get to raise your children. Banim Zecharim, Amen. Gentlemen, Amen. Many more to come. My name is Rabbi Bakrin. I approve this message. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, listen, listen, listen well, listen well. You see, where we are, where we are? Um, creation of the creation. You know why loving, God, loving a Jew is loving God? Because each one of us have a piece of God in ourselves. Our neshama that we wake up in the morning and we say, look, I, God, the soul that you gave me, the right, she is pure. That soul is pure. We have a piece of God on us. Do you know 
know what it means that you're not only a child of God, you have a connection with the Almighty God. Do you understand? I mean, I mean do you understand what it means to be a piece of God? Peace of God! And we need the approval of other people? No, but Rabbi, if I'm going to buy the bag from China, I don't feel comfortable with myself. So I have to spend $3,000 or $4,000 to feel comfortable with myself. What is this nonsense? But I'm sorry to tell you, I told you. What I'm going to tell you tonight is going to be difficult. Because you have to make a change. I'm not putting bend it. I, may, I, I, I create path. We create a new path. I said, this is not a feeling. Tonight is a root canal. Root canal is our relationship is not by giving. It's not by, by getting, it's by giving. The world said, relationship, marriage is what I'm gaining. Torah said, uh, marriage is what we're giving. We give in a relationship, we invest. Torah said, you don't need anyone to authorize you or to justify it. You see, we get so much offended. Rabbi, my wife doesn't tell me every day three times that she loves me. Why do we need it three times? Why do we need it every second? I'm not, she doesn't respect me. Do you know why? Because this deep down, you don't respect yourself. When your value is according to the way that people respect you, then you're going to have an issue on a daily basis. If your speech is building because of the crowd, then you're going to see speeches, how do we call it in English? Politically correct. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to speak about nonsense, that mean nonsense, and life is amazing, as long as you like the speech. But if you speak because you are here to deliver the message of God, then you don't, you're not going to ask yourself what's the crowd. You're not going to tell them what they want to hear. You're going to tell them what they need to hear. You see the difference between what you want to hear, what you need to hear? It's a huge difference. It's much different topics that we can speak. It's going to be comfortable. Everybody can swallow. Nobody's going to need to make the shuvah. Life is amazing. But tonight, we're going into root canal. Root canal meaning we're creating a new path. And the path is, I don't need the gesture. Yes, it's important for the wife to tell the husband, I love you. It is important. Don't be cheap and compliment. Compliment change life. Compliment change life. When Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai in the Zohar, his own student told me, told him, Rabbi Shimon, unto Shabbat, your Shabbat. When God said, let us create, let us create a man, he talked about you. Rabbi Shimon revealed all the Torah, all the secrets. It's important. It's important to give times to your wife. It's important to be a great listener. But don't be needy. Our generation is needy. We need it. If we don't get it, crisis and shalom bite. If I don't, why do you have to be needy? What's the problem to be satisfied with your own self? You know why God created Adam first with no wife? To teach him not to be needy. You can survive by yourself. How beautiful is that, huh? God created Adam to teach all of us. You can manage by yourself. Whatever you get from your wife is bonus but you don't need it. It's nice. It's a privilege. It's a bonus. Important. Important bonus. But again, don't make it a crisis if you don't get it. Last but not least. You see, this week parasha is parashat va'etcha nan. We already repeated so many times. Now we have to know it by it. If this week, you know what's special about this parasha? Not only the power of prayer, they have another thing. Anyone know will get a, a free lunch from a crazy meat. Uh, Anal crazy, what a name, what a name. Anal crazy meat. Uh, sp sponsored by the owner. Spons him and his wife. And please do not order only schnitzel. Order steaks, kebab. Feel free, kebab, lechat lunch. Yes, anyone know what's special? That, that, you know, that you approve this message? Yes. Yeah. Eh, yeah. <laughs> okay, first of all, we do in Israelis, and then we ask permission. We don't depend on other, right? <laughs> we spoke about it. Yes, anyone know what is special about this week, Parasha? What is special? Gabriel, what is special? I'm standing. What is that? 
What is that? Matan Torah. Ladies and gentlemen, this week we receive in the Torah. And you know what's funny about this? The most important act in the world history. What doesn't make sense? Something happened in Matan Torah that doesn't make sense. Can anyone tell me what? The Emet you make it, you get in uh, uh, lunch. Anyone can tell me what? Listen to this. God is coming to the Jews and said, do you want to receive the Torah? What the Jews said? We will hear and we will do, meaning we accept him. And what God did a minute later? He took the mountain of Sinai and he put it above the Jews and he said, listen, either you receive the Torah or either I kill you here. I don't understand, you're asking a woman and the night of the chuppah. Now, you know, for a woman, we don't need the agreement that she say, I do. Christianity. And in really, and, and Judaism, what did the woman do? Only the finger, that's it. Put the rings and that's it. Why? Because obvious, if her parents pay 50% of the weddings in an ajo, easily 150,000. If she went into the dress, she didn't eat for three months to look skinny, to fit the dress. For three, three months, she doesn't breathe. And all now she went in, she bought a beautiful dress. She went in to make the hair, to make everything. She came ready, ready. obvious that she do right. Obvious that she wanted. Now the woman coming in, and she tell you, my husband, I want you. I, I feel lucky to get married with you. And what do you do a second later? You take a weapons, and you put it in the head of your wife, and you say, listen, either you get married, or either I kill you here. Is any sense to this, to this act? Is any sense? This is exactly what's happened. This week, parasha, the Torah describes, and the Jewish nation stood under the mountain. Under, why under? So Rashi HaKadosh and the Gemara said that God took the mountain of Sinai and put it above the Jews. And he said, either you receive the Torah or either I kill all of you here. Why you need to do it? We scream loud and clear, I do. Listen to the explanation of a Maharal Miprag, one of the biggest rabbis in the last few, few, I mean, maybe 100 to 200, a few hundred years ago, a Maharal Miprag was a giant. And the Maharal Miprag writes, to teach you that marriage is not through excitement. You know, in the beginning, in the weddings, everybody loves each other, everybody's excited. He's still a butterfly, he's still this. You're a fresh wife, he's a fresh husband. You know, life is amazing, incredible. What exactly happened six months from now? One year from now? Two years from now, what exactly happened? Unlimited obstacle, what exactly happened? You see? In order to manage 120 years. You know what God did? Matan Torah considered to be what? Weddings. Wedding between us and God, right? If Matan Torah is wedding, who is the groom and who is the bride? Anyone know? Who is the groom? The groom is? Hashem. Hashem. Who is the bride? Hashem. Beautiful. Who is the Ketubah? The Torah. Beautiful. Now, I'm going to go a little deep. What exactly happened? What exactly happened? If, according to the Bible, I'm sorry for the request. If somebody took a young woman and he raped this woman, a virgin woman, and a man went in, a Jewish guy took another Jewish woman, and he forced himself on that woman. What's the punishment of this uh, uh, man? What's the punishment? Do you know the punishment? Yes. And? He has to marry her and never divorce. Never divorce? Never divorce. She can. Yes, beautiful. She can, he can. The punishment is, and he has to give her money. You have to give her 50, 50 shkalim, according to the Torah, but you have to get married with this woman, if she wants it, and you can never divorce. How would she want? Uh, what's it, well, why does she want what? To divorce? She want to marry him. Exactly. Well, but, you know, in that case, he's a great husband, but he made a mistake, he made a mistake. He was under, under influence, uh, you know, alcohol, or no matter what. He was under influence. Come the Almighty God, 
and he's coming to get married with us. And what God is doing? He's putting the mountain. You know what God is doing? He's forcing us to get married. Do you know why God is forcing us to get married? He said, because I will never have ability, even if you're not going to behave, even if you're not going to keep Shabbat, you're not going to keep mitzvot, you're not going to wake up in the morning, you're not going to put the fill in, I don't have any chance to divorce you. God wants this relationship to stay forever. With this is your attitude. Your attitude has to be, this relationship is not a good mood. This relationship is until 120. Then you're going to be successful in this marriage. Come the Maharal Miprag and said, Yechasim lo nivnaim al regesh. Relationship between a husband and wife do not build on emotion. Relationship between a husband and wife build on the obligation that they are married until 120. And if you're doing so, then you're going to see, then you're going to see that you're going to be successful. It was one of the greatest heroes, one of the greatest war heroes. Every time he went in, he went in, to conquer a land, every time he went in to conquer a land, you know what he used to do? He used to ask his soldiers, you know, the, to come to conquer a land 200 years, 500 years ago, he was through the sea, right? Through the sea with boats. You know what he asked all his soldiers to do? A minute that they came into the land, you know what he asked his soldiers to do? He put all the boats on fire. They asked him, why, why are we burning the boats? He said, because the only way to win a war is when you, when you don't have a way to, to run away. Now you're going to fight for your life. If you enter in marriage by knowing that there's no other breaches, this is not a test, this is not a trial, we are here until 120, you're definitely going to be successful in this marriage. And I will end with a story. I will end with a story. A story that you repeat, maybe once or twice. But for many, many of you, the new faces that we're so lucky to have, I want you to remember these stories. It was a husband and wife that came to Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, and they want to divorce. Now, they want to divorce not because they had issue, because they had no children for 10 years. According to Allah, if a person has no children, he has the right to ask his wife to do He doesn't have to, but he has the right to divorce. Abraham Avinu, after 10 years, had a new wife. You know, it's al Now, they came to Rabbi Shimon. And Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai told them, the same way you got married with happiness and Elaju, you're going to have to divorce an Elaju. Who divorced an Elaju? $300,000 for what? Divorce? How can you invite people? I invite you, God forbid, to Anenu. What is this? I don't care what's the reason. No children, his children. How can you invite people and send an invitation and ex hoping to get gifts for coming? But, you know, Rabbi Shimon Bar told him he had to do it. The rabbi said, the rabbi said, we have to do. He went and he invited everybody to Elaju, 500 people, celebration with DJ, with flowers, with Balagan, everything. It was a beautiful event. When he was drunk, completely drunk, he looked at his wife and he said, my dear wife, now he had no ability to bring children. The doctor told him, the rabbi told him, every rabbi told them, it's no children, you have to divorce. But just do it, happy. He was drunk completely. When he was drunk, He's looking at his wife and he said, my wife, I love you so much. I don't divorce you because I hate you. I divorce you because there's no children, no Aleno. You can choose one item, any item you want. The building in Manhattan, the, the car that I own, the business, the house, the mansion, anything you want, one item. She had two witnesses over there. She said, listen, you're the witness. He said that I can choose one item, any items. She said, okay. He, found, he signed the deals, he signed the contract, two witnesses signed. He went down to sleep because he was drunk. And the morning he wake up at 10 o'clock, how do you call it after drunk? Uh, hangover. Over, hangover, he wake up and he sees his wife. He said, I don't understand what she's doing here. I remember last night, it was a good night. <laughs> We're supposed to. He's looking, he said, but this is bad, bad dreams. Why are you still here? He's looking at his wife, he said, what are you doing here? She said, you, you told me to choose one item. I choose you. 
I choose you. They came to Rabbi Shimon, they told Rabbi Shimon, Rabbi Shimon told them, I promise you, if this is your choice, you're gonna have a child. Nine months later, they had a child. Even though, why? Because you, you burn all the bridges and you leave only one bridge. What's the bridge? We are married until 120. No matter how many obstacles we're gonna have, no matter how many screaming, you can scream loud and, loud and clear. I love the voice of my wife when she's screaming. I said, you know, you can be in the opera. Can you make it a little louder? What a beautiful voice. Some of us getting upset. I enjoy it. I, I record it. I record it. When I'm driving, I can hear the voice. Wow, you know, you know, what's the problem? I choose you, no matter what. Daniel, I, you, you choose my son. That's it, you choose my son. You choose my son. And I choose you. If each one of us will live tonight. But remember that marriage is not what I'm getting. Marriage is what I'm giving. If each one of us is gonna remember, the most important thing is, I don't need approval for who I am and what I worth. I am the son of God and I am a piece of God. And being a piece of God, I don't need anyone to tell me I love you, to tell me I'm great. It's needed, it's nice, it's, it's beautiful, but it's not needed. I'm not a beggar, I'm a respectable human being. When you respect yourself, the world will respect you. And last but not least, let's stand up all of us. Let's stand up all of us. Let's stand up all of us. All of us, for a second. Let's stand up all of us. Evo. Michael! Evo. Now it's time. Now it's time, Michael. Now it's time. Of course, of course. Michael, take your time. Take your time. Just do it fast. Let's stand up all of us. All of us. All of us. Everybody look at the tent.